Hello, Outliers. We are rolling along. My name is Niyama Shang, and thank you so much for joining us here on the Outliers Edge Roundtable, where we find extraordinary outliers who are playing their game out in the world, and we come and we find out what are the rules of your game and how do you win, right? Because the thing about us here as Outliers is that we have decided to elevate the world around us, to show up in both our leadership, but do it in a way that allows us to fund our lives, our livelihood, and the impact that we want to make out in the world. And so today, I am really pleased to bring together uh, two extraordinary outliers, one of whom you might actually remember from a prior conversation. That's right, we have a boomerang, it feels good. Uh, and we're gonna just keep playing on from there. All right, so let's give you a chance to meet the outliers who are gonna be a part of today's round table. Why don't we start off with you, Keisha? Can you tell us about you and the game you are currently playing? Sure, so my name is Keisha Woods. I also go by Coach K. Um, I am the founder of Upgraded Mindset. I am a full-time life and business coach, podcaster, serial entrepreneur. Um, I wear many hats, but that is the joy of serial entrepreneurship. Um, I have been working with women since 2020, um, shift their mindsets, um, get out of outdated thinking methods. Um, a lot of times we suppress a lot of things and hold ourselves back because of outdated value systems, outdated belief systems. Um, me being one of those up until 2020, I made that transformation, started that journey and wanted to help other women do the same. Um, in that journey, I transformed also into a full-time business coach um, helping women begin and elevate their entrepreneurial purpose, because that's the journey that I've walked. Um, I believe that mindset and entrepreneurship go hand in hand because anyone can start a business, but in order to elevate your business in any form, you have to have the mindset in place to make sure that happens. So walking that journey, but also empowering women to do the same thing. Um, I am an author. Um, I have Amazon bestselling book called From Havoc to Healing, 30 Days of Reconditioning. Anything that I can do to empower, uplift, inspire, motivate us to be the most empowering versions of ourselves, you will catch me there firsthand. So I'm just happy to be here with you guys today. Well, we're happy to have you here, Keisha. Like, I, I, I'm glad that you play the game. I'm glad you play the game so full out uh, when you do play. Uh, and you talked about outdated thinking, and that gets me, that gets my mind thinking uh, quite a bit. I, we'll see where today's conversation goes. Glad to have you here. Absolutely. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and then, uh, Wansa, uh, thank you for coming back in. And the last time you, you came on, we had some technical difficulties. And what I really, uh, what I really get about you is that you talked in the last time about determination. You are determined. The very first spot that I had available on my calendar, you took it and you came back in for, for a round two. So I, I want to say like, I acknowledge you here. Um, let's, let's, let's go on here. Outliers you in for a double treat today. Uh, Monta, help us get to know you. What, what game are you playing right now? I'm really determined to make sure this time goes well, because I had a, such a sensational time, even though it was cut short when we last met up online. That's great Monta, well. I am a student. I am the host of the Divide and Conquer podcast available on all your favorite podcasting streaming platforms. And I am the producer of Global South Perspectives, a web series focusing on issues and debates, as well as the key events going on in the Global South. So that's countries in Africa, Asia, the Caribbean, Oceania, and parts of Latin America. My game is really a journey of discovery and the journey of implementation. My, similar to Keisha, my creative story, my entrepreneurial story began in 2020. Maybe it was different factors. I know Keisha is uplifting people, but mine really started with me playing games on Xbox and uploading clips to YouTube. So that creative side sort of delved into me going into self-development spaces like many people did during the pandemic. We were all enclosed and that made us look within, that made us do some introspection. And in my young age, I decided that I want to try and develop myself to the young man that I'm currently am and a man that I want to be in the future. So I got into the self-help spectrums, I got into all forms, of, uh, all forms of philosophy, and my main goal is really trying to not only empower myself, but also the community of friends and family members around me. So I focus on mainly developing and focusing on thinking that isn't my own, Dig, digging up nuggets of knowledge from all sorts of places, from whoever and wherever, as long as it's concise, and as long as it's of value, I will make sure I try and implement it in some way or some form. And that's what my podcast looks at, trying to gain all sorts of information, all sorts of wisdom from so many different places, so many different insights, and using them to be not only more self-aware, 
but also try and live our best experiences here on this planet while we still have the time. Well, I'm glad that you made the time for this here, Monsa, uh, and also for you, Keisha. I think that we're going to have uh, an incredible conversation. Um, let's start off over here with something you brought up, Keisha, earlier around like outdated thinking. All right. Um, and I'd like to like ask you, like, so you talked about 2020, you realized there was some outdated thinking you had, you, you made the shift and now you're helping women do the same, uh, women entrepreneurs do the same. I want to like bring it into the right now, right? What's something that in the, like in the last, you know, last week or so you realize, oh, my thinking's outdated. Or if you're really willing to go there, what's something that right now, if you're like, oh, wow, if I think about it now, like this is something that like, it got me to this point, but it won't get me to the next place that I'm trying to get to. Um, really something that I have really embraced here in the last couple of weeks, as far as outdated thinking is having to be busy all of the time. Mm. Um, I've learned on this journey that there's a difference between being busy and being productive. And what I have found is, yes, I can be busy with a whole bunch of things, but are these things really helping me elevate um, and having those conversations with myself, but also with my coach and my mentor, some of them weren't. So I had to really say, hey, it's time to really evaluate and say what's outdated with regards to my business, what's outdated with regards to my personal being. And I'm actually in the process of making some shifts regarding that. So um, just speaking on that here recently, that is definitely it. You don't have to be busy to be productive. I love that. You're going to fight with me. Distinctions are very real. Like I like the, like two things that people think are like, I'm all about what's that nuance. To me, that's what makes the outlier difference. That's one of the outlier edges. There's several of them, but that's one of them. Um, you said here, can, do you mind, Keisha, if you're, if you're down with it, would you mind making it real for us here where you're like, like what's one thing, one specific thing that you like looked at and you said this thinking here, like, or let's say this, like what's one thing where you realized, oh, this is just busy work. It's not productive work. Just so we can like kind of th like make it real for us when we're going through our list. Sure. So I do have two podcasts currently right now. I have Empowering Real Talk, which I've had for three years, which focuses a lot on self-discovery, um, mindset transformation, and just holistic well-being. Well, then I launched The Woman's Hustle, Thrills and Spills of Entrepreneurship. I launched that this year, and that is geared towards women who are interested in being entrepreneurs, women who are startup entrepreneurs, or women who are have been on the journey but are completely stuck. Um, it offers basically a lot of insight, but also support as a woman entrepreneur, because that is my target audience as a life and business coach. I had to really sit back and say, even though Empowering Real Talk is something that I have been, ha have had for three years, um, I probably I love my baby, um, but the woman's hustle is actually receiving more traction. Um, so being transparent in that moment, I had to sit down, and analyze and say, is it really me continuously being productive by having both podcasts? Because as we all know, as podcasters, podcasting is a lot of work. So to have two full-time podcasts, I had to really sit down and say, are both of these benefiting me as a business, as a brand and helping me elevate to get where I want to be? And I honestly had to have that conversation that they're not. So I had to really have that, you know, make that decision and, I will go ahead and share that probably the end of this year, Empowering Real Talk will be taking a hiatus, um, but the episodes will still be available, but it will probably be a little hiatus with regards to recording new episodes at this time, so. Yeah, I appreciate that, Keisha. That, that's like, um, it's not an easy thing to 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 determine. And, and from hearing from you, like you have someone on, on your team here, the coach that you work with that's able to help you like get some perspective and be able to see some of these things. Am I getting that right? It's true. It's awesome. True. awesome. It awesome. is. Um, you just have to, you know, that's your baby. You know, when you have something that you launched and created, you know, it's grown with me, but I, you know, you just have to look at it and say, is it something that is going to continue to be a benefit, a productive benefit? And, you know, so I'm a you little know, sad about it, but you know, those are the decisions you have to make, you know, when it comes to your brand and things like that. So well, I appreciate not, you making it. Gone forever, so just no, I I appreciate that, and like and like and what I'm hearing from you is like 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 you have a specific objective right now, and you're looking at it, and you're like, hey, prior, prioritization wise, I know what's my baby, and I also know like what like what actually is moving to me toward my objective, it and is true. you know, um, 
I, I appreciate this. I'm going to come to you months in just a bit, but I want to also point out one more thing here, outliers, as you're listening to this. So one, uh, there's already been a couple of great nuggets for me. One is the distinction between busy and productive. Like those things I think about all the time. Uh, another thing you might think about is like productive and efficient or productive and effective, right? All those words are kind of used there um, somewhat interchangeably. And it's like the main thing comes down to, and I think Keisha, like, let me know if I'm putting words in your mouth, but you're like, what is the most effective thing? What is actually getting traction in my world? I can do, you're not, you're not sitting down doing nothing, right? you know, <laughs> but some things Definitely are getting not. you the results you want. Yeah. And some things are getting you results, but is yes. it the results that you want? Am I getting Absolutely. this? You are yeah. accurate in that, you know, we can do so many things, um, and, but you have to sit down and have those honest conversations. Is it something that is helping you in your word elevate, you know, and although my podcast is there, you know, it's not the level that I feel it should be at this point, but that's because I, again, um, I've listened, I read a book here recently that said, that talks like the 10 X mindset. And that's really where I'm headed, you know, trying to, and having that 10 X mindset requires you to be more productive, but not as busy. And that requires kind of cutting 80% of the things that you think are helping you elevate in business, but they actually are not. So um, I love that you touched on the words, you know, effective and efficient, because those are also words that played a part in the decisions that I'm making right now too. I love it. I love it. And you, you said 10X. I'm like, I'm going to smile on my face. I'm like, oh, <laughs> we might go there. If we want to say 10X, we might, we might just have to go mm. there. All right, well, so let's let's come to you here. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go in two two places here. First, let's start off with you with this uh, busy and, and productive distinction here, right? Um, actually, let, let's put into like, yeah, I, let's go with that. The busy versus productive. What's something in your world right now that like you have recently discovered? It's like, hey, look, this is this is work. I'm doing it, but is it actually giving you traction toward what it is that that you're looking for? I'm really happy that Keisha talked on having multiple podcasts because there's just so much that you give into both outlets and it's not giving you the returns that you want. So if you can prioritize one and you're able to put in effective work and you're able to get the outcomes that you want, it's really, really something special. Mm -hmm. When you think about busy versus productive, it's more so intentionality or being intentional that I think about. If you're doing minimal work, but you're still getting the returns that you want, if you're spending, let's give the podcast example, if you're spending an hour editing, but you're getting the traction and the views and the notability that you so desire, then there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're just working, if you're just pushing out content that is probably not at the standard you want, not at the level you want, but you're doing it purely for the fact that you're getting volume out, purely that you're getting lots and lots of content out it may not be at the value you want that's just you being busy because it's not that content isn't giving you any value nor your audience value it's just there so help There's make this no real for us here once so like what's something for you because I, I get where you come from what's something in your world right now that you looked at where you're like oh if i'm being honest this is busy. It's not actually like getting me the tracks. It's not the productive. It might be with the podcast. It might be something completely different, but I just want to just like continue to expand on this with just some real, real world examples on this. Yeah, of course, of course. I'd say that it's really hard for me to find an example because I've sort of taken away what was just busy work and not okay. productive. But yeah. I just think back because there was it, it, a time I was creating, sorry, this is just going to revolve around content. But there was yeah. a time where I was just making random YouTube videos purely for there being traction or some sort of attention on my platforms, whether that was Spotify, whether that was YouTube, whether that was Instagram, I was pushing out content purely so it was there. It didn't give me any sort of fulfillment because it was sort of trendy work, things that were popular at the moment that I didn't resonate with. They weren't part of my brand. The people in my community and my audience didn't resonate with the content. It was sort of just there for being there. It was content for content's sake. Like I say, it didn't give me any fulfillment whatsoever. It was just a void for me to try and push in work so I can look like I'm busy. I can look like I'm working to an objective, despite me not having a pure defined intention or pure defined goal with said content. So I, I appreciate that here. We're going we're gonna to play a little bit because uh, something you just said has made this come to my mind. So right now I have a, I'm working through something where I'm focused on the mantra is like, uh, do something until it works, not if it works. All right. So just saying that again, like, like for me, I'm, I tend to be someone that's like, oh, I tried something 
it didn't immediately get traction. This must not be it. Let me go do something else. Whereas now I'm looking at it and saying, well, almost anything can get traction. I'm sure I can find a case study. I'm sure I can find someone's success story of someone who, you know, did something and made a whole business out of it, multi-million dollar business out of it, right? The the thing is that that person found a way to make it work for them versus versus me where I just stopped and decided to go to the next thing. So I'm, kind of, I'm curious for you all, um, what's something that, well, A, where's one place where you feel like this would be true for you inside of, inside of your business, inside of what you're building right now, where you're like, look, regardless, like I'm gonna find a way to make this work uh, and, then, and then go on from there. And uh, I'll come to you first, Keisha. Do you understand the question? Let me make sure I'm-, I'm Go ahead and say it again for me. Yeah, so the question here is like, what's one thing that you're either currently working on or that you that you have been working on that you made a decision to say, I'm going down this path to figure out what it will take to make it work as opposed to saying like, oh, it didn't work for me. So I'm going to go choose something different. Um, definitely my new podcast, um, The Woman's Hustle, Thrills and Spills of Entrepreneurship. Because for one, um, I know that we all can relate um, to the thrills and spills. I use the thrills and spills because entrepreneurship is a roller coaster ride. And I made sure that I was very intentional in having those, you know, different words to make sure that people could understand that. Um, because that's the journey that I'm walking. That's who I serve at this time. And that's where I am like really loving my space because I'm seeing the differences from just being a mindset coach to shifting into a mindset coach and entrepreneurial purpose coach. Coming into that um, actually had to shift a lot of things, but it didn't take away the original life coach, mindset coach that I am. It just added to that, but it also has added, you know, from a business standpoint, because that's a whole nother audience that I'm now reaching because again, speaking with the outdated methods, a lot of people want to use their outdated beliefs and thinking to start something new. You can't do it. It's pretty much impossible. So uh, combining those two together um, is where the woman's hustle is coming in because it's giving the free value, the free resources, um, and also helping other women see that other women are going through the things that they are experiencing and they don't have to be alone. And it establishes a sense of community because every episode that has aired since I have launched it, I have received an inbox. I have received an email. I have received a message to be a guest. There has always been some ROI back on an episode of my podcast. So to me, it's all, you know, all wheels up when it comes to the woman's hustle. So I'm just super excited to what the continuing journey of that is going to look like. Yeah, I, I really appreciate that because, you know, um, I think about the process of building a business and finding out what works, right? Like you can have people who are, like, you're a serial entrepreneur, Keisha. So like you can have one business and then try to apply the same exact things to the next business and it doesn't get the same kind of traction, right? You, but you know, like, but what you do learn is like, how do I figure out what gets traction? Yeah, you know, how do I figure out what builds? And then you do that process over and over again to see what it works like for that. Would you, do you agree with that so far? Yeah, I do. I yeah, do. yeah. But one of the things that I'm hearing from you is, um, and is like you had you had your first podcast and it's still like it's still your baby you still love it but and you when you made a switch you didn't go and say and i need to write a go go write a book why not like like now that you don't you already have a book but like it's not but like you didn't like decide like i need to go change the platform that i'm on yeah. or the way that i'm doing it it's like it's like i get the podcast and i enjoy this part here let me go and now create something that is going to meet more of my current needs yeah. more more directly so it's like it's a pivot but like it almost feels to me, as I'm talking to you about this year, um, almost feels like closer to something where like, if you look at just general marketing with like copywriting and such, like they do split testing, like there's lots of experiments yes. going on, right? And it's not to say that because you wrote one email one day and then you wrote a, you tried it with a different headline or you did a different thing, like that you're, that you're pivoting. You're just like, I'm in the experimentation and I'm continuing to, to grow in from there. I'm curious for you here, and the reason I bring this up, Keisha, and then I want to come to you once afterwards, but the reason I'm bringing this up is that I think there's a lot of outliers out there who are like, I got to get it perfectly right the first time. Or they're looking at it and they're like, and they're like everyone in my life 
things for me is like bouncing around and all this stuff. And I just want to just like take this thing and get this done. I want to, I want to, I want to show that I'm, i you know, become a master of one, you know, what, <laughs> you know, um, and I'm really curious if you can speak to the space of pivoting while also staying targeted toward that elevated mission. Um, it, it really involves a lot of continued personal development. Um, you have to make sure that you are still in alignment from a personal standpoint. Um, as I didn't state, but in the beginning of this journey, um, I was still in full-time corporate America. I honestly had no intention on becoming an entrepreneur, even when I began this journey in 2020. But because of the alignments and things that were going on, it shifted me into full-time entrepreneurship. Um, I was actually let go from my corporate job of seven years. So being on the journey of personal transformation is very critical in order to continue to pivot and elevate in your business. Because I say this word all the time when it comes to outdated, and I love that you touched on it earlier because you'll probably hear me say it 10 more times, but I had an outdated belief system of me being low priority, me prioritizing everybody else. I had outdated beliefs of being a people pleaser. Um, and that's just on that personal development journey. Because I have shifted my mind when it comes to those thought processes, I am now able to prioritize me, set the boundaries that need to be set from a mental standpoint so it can continue to help me pivot in my business. Because I know if I need to take a break, reset, realign, whatever it is, I know the triggers within myself on a personal development level to say, hey, this is stressing me out too much. Um, and entrepreneurship is no easy feat. Don't get it twisted. But I'm not going to put myself into a predicament where I am stressed out to where health concerns are coming into play. I promised myself that I would never do that again. So just speaking on that aspect, you have to make sure that your personal development is continual. You have to have a growth mindset. This matters all day, every day. And if you are not in the hold, mindset- hold on, Real quick, you said this matters. What is the oh, this? You, 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 for those matters. that are listening, yeah. Mindset matters all day. Um, mm. You know, And the mind is where everything begins. So if you are operating in an outdated system of believing that your outdated values from 10 years ago are going to help you elevate and you know pivot now. Um, that's something that you need to think about. Personal development is something that should be continual each day forward. And I have that mindset of understanding that I don't wanna be the smartest person in the room. I always wanna be able to learn from somebody and that's what helps me pivot. All right, we're going to play with that here today. Uh, once I'm curious for you, you, like you talked about, like you, you've had some pivots with the with what you're you've been doing. Uh, speak to me about like the one that felt like the most that was the most difficult for you to make, uh, and what your kind of your thought process was as you were making that making that change. Uh, I'll speak into the fact. Uh, Keisha, I'll go. I'll go to Monsa first on this one. Then oh, I'll I'm come sorry. Up I'm no, sorry. No, you're totally, you're totally <laughs> great. You're totally great. This is, we're just flowing. We're flowing. No, with the global self perspective uh, channel shift, that was originally called Talking Points Africa. That was purely based on African issues, African events, African cultural significance. But we decided that we can widen our scope, we can widen what we're covering and broaden our horizons on the issues that are going on in more diverse regions. That's why we continue to, uh, that's why we changed it into global self we get a wider perspective on things going on and we could have stuck with talking point africa it was a format that worked it was getting traction it was getting views it was getting notability notoriety and engagement on platforms like youtube and linkedin linkedin especially because people could have conversations in the comments and more discourse was going on during in those areas but when we decided it, it was really trying not to be dogmatic in our approach when i say that it's just if we what we had worked, we could have continued doing it, but we decided there's more that we can do with this brand. By expanding and looking at other parts of the globe, we decided that we can cover more topics, and with that we can use more of our skills to develop, develop and deliver a service, uh, what do I call it, I'm losing the words, develop a, a form of content that's not only really more engaging to a wider audience, but also more fulfilling to create. You get to cover different stories that you wouldn't have in the past, but just because you weren't as dogmatic as you were before, just as we were able to delve into different topics, it gave us a sense of happiness, joy, to be able to cover such a wide array of issues around the global self. 
So I think that when we look at not at widening our perspective, and we look at trying new things, not for the sake of switching what we've already got, the formats that already work for us, we pivot in a way that's lateral. Not that we're going down, we have to start again, we have to reinvent our content, reinvent ourselves, even on a personal level. It's just that once we make that move, we take what we've learned so far and we apply it to new areas. The whole concept doesn't have to change. It's just using what we've gained, the experience, the knowledge and the insight and transferring it into something else that we find not necessarily more interesting, but more fulfilling in that time. So I'm going to play with this here. Like, uh, I'm like I, I tell everyone I don't have a theme in any conversation, but right now I have a, a, a line of questioning that just like I'm just interested in. Right. Um, we use the word in this conversation traction earlier. And I like I'm, I'm honestly playing out the various areas in my mind where for like the first years of my entrepreneurship, actually, not, I, I say that as if like just almost to minimize it for the first seven years of my entrepreneurship game. I didn't really think I, I don't think I really knew how to manage and measure whether something was, whether I had traction or not. Right. Um, and so I'm, I'm curious here and like my ask is just be, just be, be honest around it for yourself. Like, like if, if, if it's not the way, if, if it doesn't line up for the way that you do things, just say it and we'll, we'll move on. But I'm curious what you use in terms of like external metrics to like to determine whether something has traction for you it could be the podcast that's that's, that's one thing uh, but like if you have a business Keisha, i know you have a business here like you can look at it and be like, like help us see more empirically what you do in order to to see what something has traction and i'm happy to, to answer that question right now in terms of like some of the distinctions between how i was thinking beforehand and not um if that would help i'm, I'm i can give an example of something that that changed for me otherwise i'm happy to just jump into what what, what you do keisha um, so because as a serial entrepreneur, um, I have many aspects. So not only with upgraded mindsets, I also have a brick and mortar location, um, mm. that I have to monitor as well. I am the, uh, managing operator of our brick and mortar here in my city. So there are a number of measures and, you know, analytics and stuff that I have to look at. Um, Google is probably my best friend. Um, I use Google trends. I use go Google analytics. Um, we use Google ads. Um, from they from the local standpoint. Now, when it comes to my coaching standpoint, um, I do have you know email marketing and things along those lines. So I'm looking at my CRM system using as far as emails, seeing if they've been opened, if they've been clicked on. You know what am I getting? I have an online store. I'm measuring you know my analytics to see if the links are being clicked. The purchases, where are they coming from? There's so many different areas, um, but I just to generalize it, Google is my best friend. Google has so many tools um, that as a startup business owner and a small business owner um, that are so beneficial to help you. Now, from the podcasting standpoint, absolutely. Um, the platforms that I use, I pay attention to that. I pay attention to my YouTube channel because my podcast streams on my YouTube channel. So I'm paying attention to how many views are getting on this, how, when they're being viewed. There's just so many different levels, you know, yeah. with regard to that. I could probably talk about them all day. Well, but if look, I just I, I'm, I'm down to like, go, go, <laughs> go in, like, 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 and, and cause the, and we'll go in as far, as far as we can, but like, I, I'm, I am curious around it. I'm curious around like how we determine what traction is. So like, I, I hear you, you're, like you're looking at a lot of different things, Keisha, and I'm, I'm curious, like, even just for you, like if there were two metrics that you look at when you look at your Google analytics or two things that you look at when you, when you go into um, your, um, you know, any other, any of the other place, pick, pick one place. Pixels, yeah. yeah. Pick, pick, pick something. If you have pixels. All right. Tell, tell me a little bit more about that. Like just help this help me. Like, I think, I think the thing becomes, the reason I'm asking this question is like, like, like a lot of times I'll talk to outliers and like something is working. Once you were talking about it, like, like they're doing something, it's working and then they have a feeling, but like, like they may not know that it's working. You know what I'm saying? They might've just started doing something and they're like, it's not giving me the immediate results that I thought it should have so on and so forth. And I'm going to switch, you know? And I think that in having a responsible conversation about pivoting, uh, rather than just being like, just go and change because you're like feeling it. I'm curious, like, like some of the things that y'all look at to say, like, okay, like, 
I don't just make, I, this is how I choose to make my, my choices. This is how I go into it and so on and so forth. That's right. the premise behind this year. I went down the way of metrics, but it might be something different. And if it is just like, hey, this doesn't feel good, that's fine too. Uh, yeah. I just want to, I, I do want to just see if we can like give outliers a little bit something more to grab onto okay. when they're, when they're looking at themselves. So one thing that I strongly recommend when you are looking at whatever analytics that you're looking at is you have to realize that it does take time. It does take time to gain the traction, whether it is a positive traction, whether it is no traction at all, at all whether you're losing traction, it takes time to figure those things out. Um, me personally, I give myself a standard six months with anything that I have launched, anything that is currently running. I will let it run consistently for six months. I do a 30 day review. I do a 90 day review and I do a six month review. The 30 and 90 is strictly for my viewing purposes only. Um, as small businesses or entrepreneurs, we will get caught up in trying to look at the analytics every day. And I want us again to get out of that because that is not you being productive. That is you. It's a level of procrastination, honestly. You know, we can say that we're busy, but are you being productive? So I do I have a 30 day point checkpoint. I have a 90 day checkpoint and the six month checkpoint is when I analyze let's look at these numbers. Am I seeing those candlesticks go up a little bit? Am I seeing the swoop go down? Am I seeing it stagnant? Am I seeing it just not moving at all? And because if you could have a physical product, because I have different levels. So I have the upgraded mindsets online store. I have to look at the analytics on that. Am I seeing the traction on that? How many purchases have I had in the last six months, right? Um, how many purchases, how many clicks versus purchases? So if I've had 150 clicks in a month out of those 150 clicks to my website, how many purchases have I made? So out of 150 clicks, if I've had 60 purchases, one could say that is a success. Absolutely, because I had purchases, but it's under half. So speaking from an analytical standpoint, the ROI on that is not really where I would like for it to be. My analytic would be at least to have 100 out of 150. Of course, I want 150, but being realistic, I would like 100. So because I sell t-shirts, you know, like motivational mugs and things along those lines, maybe it's the quotes that aren't, you know, attracting people. Maybe it's the pricing. So now it's time to evaluate and take a look. Um, one thing that I definitely suggest to people, yes, you need to find out and make sure you know what your competition is doing. Um, as a coach, it is super important for me to not want to necessarily go dive in, but you definitely want to know what your competition is doing that is making is that they're successful in. So mm -hmm. I'm going to go analyze, you know, hey, there's a particular quote. Um, as we record this, I have a shirt on that says mindset matters. Mindset matters. We know that. I can look at Google Trends all day and the word mindset is always a highly trending word. So I know that. I focus on that. So you're going to make sure anything that you go to with my website will have the term mindset. Not necessarily matters. It can say mindset is everything, but you will always see the word mindset. So just an example of what I look at. I know that mindset is a highly trending thing and it has been for a while. So I just give myself six months. If I need to switch up designs and things like that, when it comes to the store, that's exactly what I'm going to do. But I'm going to have done the research to see what actually is selling and what is trending and make sure that I get myself in alignment with that. So I can, you know, monetize that as well. <laughs> so, oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Like, I appreciate you. I appreciate you staying with it here, uh, here and, and, and diving in and just like helping us see like your process. I'm hearing 30, 60, 30, 60, 90, but then uh, also 180, uh, where you're like, oh, sorry, 30, 90, and then 180. Yeah. Uh, and you have like the checkpoints and you actually do like the actual analytics and like make decisions every, every 180 days, six months. Yeah. Monsa, how about you? Like, like, like what's the, what, what goes behind make making pivots making changes for you here because I, I think it's i think it's a conversation worth having it definitely is a conversation worth having and i think i'm privileged in the fact that i have a very a very small audience very small sample size to gather from so feedback on my content feedback on what i'm doing my creations is very immediate it'll be from my social circle first then their social circle it sort of spreads out because everyone who deals with my content knows me on a personal level and if they don't I somehow still get feedback just because my sample size is so small. So if I do need to expand or when I do expand, 
I already have the information that I need to know what's working and what isn't. I think using what I've learned from school, from my business classes is, if you're able to communicate with your customers, because they're the ones buying your product, it doesn't help if you're making changes, if you're making deviations for no particular reason based off analytics, when you can get direct reviews or direct input from the people who are actually buying your product or purchasing your service. So if you can use that, uh, those metrics, those personal IRL metrics, to be able to expand or maybe improve upon what you've done or what you are doing with your business. And it's a very, very useful goldmine. I'll give you an example. My mom and I ordered takeaway two weeks ago from a company, I don't want to give out names, but a company here that specializes in like transport and food delivery. It's a bit like Uber, but it's specific. I understand. To Definitely. So we decided not to use that application because it had so many bug features on the app itself. It didn't allow you to use certain payment options. It just wasn't a nice user experience. And surprisingly, the guy who designed the app, one of the founders, one of the CEOs, lives in our area. So when, we, when he saw that our food got delivered by a separate uh, food delivery company, by the restaurant itself, he came to our door and he asked us, why is it that you didn't use our service? Why is it that you didn't use our application? Can I get your input? So luckily, he had access to his customer base. He had access, direct access to the people who use, or in this case, avoided using his product slash service. The amount of value that he could get from us as the customer, direct value, is it's unquantifiable in my opinion. Because if you know exactly what your customers want, exactly what your market base is interested in, and you're not having to use internet metrics or have, the numbers are useful. Numbers do not lie. Whether it's in mathematics, whether it's in economics, in whatever sector, the numbers do not lie. But we are human beings. So having the human input is something you can never replace. Yeah, I find, I find like it's, it's been good. So I used to work as a retirement actuarial consultant. So I'm good with numbers and I'm good with setting up assumptions and setting up, uh, um, uh, you know, projections and such. You know, I've been very Excel rich in the last few. I'm like, oh, if only I just keep doing this, right? Um, and so it's great to great to hear this. Like, great to hear how y'all are looking at it, right? And just like ultimately, uh, liars, like we. My main thing here is just to make sure that we're being mindful around how we actually make our choices, right? Especially with us as outliers, we've done a lot of different things. We can change up, we can, we, we've seen a lot of things and typically we find ways to be successful. Uh, like, uh, and so as we are going through this, I, I wanted to play and for any of you that are saying, okay, wait a minute, I've done a whole bunch of different things or people keep saying different things and I keep jumping from one thing to the next. I wanted you to get some insight into how other people are are taking some time to slow down, you know, whether it's looking at the numbers, uh, having conversations, doing a combination of the two. It's like, you can, you might see the numbers and you're like, why isn't this at 100 out of 150? Let me go talk to some people who didn't end up buying or let me talk to the people who did because I could sit on my own and make up my, I can assume why, why it didn't work and spend another six months testing something or I can go find out some information and then test and see if those people are actually if that actually makes a buy-in if it actually impacts buy-in or if it's just like a thing people think that they want Absolutely. Yeah, all right so uh keisha today you got us on the mindset and matters so let's play a little bit deeper into the mindset world and then we're gonna we're gonna end for today um yeah so this is the question i have for you so outliers here we talked right before we hit record around the difference uh, the distinction i have between uh moving forward and elevating upwards right moving forward and elevating your game and so I would like to spend some time here. And I think, I think both of you have like, y'all, y'all do the work when it comes to doing the work. Um, and so the question I would have is this, I'm looking for the, the, the distinction. I'm looking for the nuance, right? Uh, I'll start with you, Keisha, because, because the mindset component of it, but like, what's something that essentially I want to be able to help like an outlier out there be able to see the distinction for themselves. I say, like, am I doing more of like moving forward toward a goal or am I actually elevating my thinking? Am I actually playing at a, like at a different level of thinking? Right. And so when it comes to mindset, I I'd be curious for you, Keisha, what's something that either your clients might ask you or like a mindset that you might actually pick up on. Like, so you have a question a client might ask you or, or a mindset you, you may pick up on where you are able to discern and be like, Oh, they're just trying to do more of what is already like more of their same level, but they're not actually challenging themselves to play that bigger level game that they said that they wanted to. 
So when I speak about mindset, um, mindset, even though it is an overall thing, it really involves understanding that you have to be accountable for your actions, right? Um, Shifting your mindset involves accountability on so many levels. Accountability that you don't know everything when it comes to elevating yourself, because if you knew everything, you would be on, you would be where you wanted to be. But a lot of times in like 85% of us are not, you know, and, but we don't know how to do it. Um, It also revolves around environment. We seem to believe that we need to stay in our long-term environments of things that might not be beneficial to us because of the sake of loyalty, the sake of friendship, the sake of family, Um, really shifting out of that mindset and understanding that these might be the people that could be holding you back and you're allowing them to hold you back. So the accountability factor comes in to say, I have allowed myself to be restricted because of other people in my life and other things in my environment. So shifting that mindset requires you saying, I'm ready and willing to sacrifice whatever has been holding me back in order to elevate. And that is not going to be a pretty journey. I We speak about mindset and we see all these social media graphics and videos that make it just seem so serene and peaceful. And it is far from that. Um, as someone that has walked that journey and continues to walk that journey, shifting your mindset to think differently, shifting your mindset to prioritize yourself first, shifting your mindset to prioritize your business and what that looks like for you growing is going to get a little ugly, but you have to be ready to make that change. And it involves you replacing those thinking methods that might be hindering you. So an example that I like to talk about is making the changes, right? So having the conversations, knowing that the people that have been with you may not be the people that are going to help you transform, which is why I decided to become a coach. Um, I have left some people in my past from my outdated life. You know, um, some of those people have been left behind and we have to be okay with that. Is it going to hurt? It's okay to grieve those old friendships. It's okay to grieve those old relationships, but understanding that that is a part of the process of growing and elevating. It has to be done. So when I speak on mindset, it's just a matter of understanding that you have to be accountable for the changes that you want to make, and you have to be ready and willing to do whatever it's going to take instilling that growth mindset to say, I'm ready to do whatever it's going to take for me to pivot and elevate as a business owner, but also as an individual, because you have to start it on an individual level first before you can actually pivot in business. A lot of people tend to want to try to start businesses and grow businesses when they have their personal lives are completely in havoc. You know, whatever making those shifts require, whether it's therapeutic intervention, whether it's coaching, whether it's mentorship, be okay and be open-minded to receiving any or all of those things because it's for the better of you to be a more mentally healthy version of yourself, but also a more powerful version of yourself. So just shifting and and shifting into understanding that support is going to be different than what you think it is. Nice. And I think like it's interesting here because like, you know, the outliers here, they like they've done the personal development one-on-one, but like, and so like there's an element of, uh what would be that like next that that next level of difference and some something i think i'm hearing from you around the elements of like if you're are you continuing to like you know make shifts at their current level or actually stepping up into something new yeah. uh one of the things i hear from you is like it's like you're probably stepping into something new if you, if if it ends up being a bit painful a bit messy a bit ugly uh in the process like if if it's something where you're just like you're doing it's more you at the same level might be a little bit smoother. It might be easier for you to take in. Uh, I mean, like, look, I can also see it on the other side of it where it's like, oh, it's for, for, I know there's been times where I've like stepped into playing a higher level. I'm like, oh my God, this is so much easier because I'm no longer like trying to do what everyone else said I should do that is not actually me. Yeah, but, but that's uh, an outdated value that you've replaced, you know? Yeah. So that was also a mindset shift, you know, why you doing that and stepping in and being unapologetically authentic in who you are. 
because a lot of times we are, we are fearful of other people's judgment. And that's another reason why we, you know, I know that's probably another topic for another day, but it is, it's a part of the mindset. That is a mindset shift is to authentically step into who you want to become and not worrying about what anyone else has to say about it. So let's play off that there. Uh, Ron, so what about you? Like, wow. Um, if you had to think about some like distinction here and we'll, this will be our last question here before we wrap up for today. Um, but the, for someone who is like, I want to play a bigger game. I think I'm playing too small Right? I hear that all the time from outliers. And like, uh, it's, it's like, and what I realized is that like the game that they used to play that was big, they're now good at it. And now, so now it feels small, you know, uh, how can you tell when it's when either you or someone you're you're talking to is making a move that is actually helping them play a bigger game as opposed to just doing more at the same level that they were at. Well, first I just want to go back to Keisha's point about it, it being ugly. As as an outlier, you've already got all the skills, all the tools that you need. That's why you're an outlier. By definition, mm -hmm. you're going against the grain. You've already established yourself as being in a different space to most people. That's why you're seeing success in your business or your ventures in any form, really. So when you think about the mindset shift, it's not really looking at what do I do to keep me at the level that I'm at, because you've already established yourself at that certain level. Like what you're saying is, how do I become a bigger player? How do I go on to bigger and better things? It's sort of accepting that once I've got to the level I'm at, I should be aiming higher. Even the I think when we look at mindset, we think everything has to be in a positive linear fashion. Sometimes you will get knockbacks and setbacks. Sometimes you will have to deal with very negative events that hurt your psyche, that hurt your confidence. So when you look at mindset, you have to be able to have the mental fortitude to overcome those setbacks. Because not always are you going to keep look are you going to be able to keep looking at making bigger moves, making bigger game plans. Sometimes you have to overcome a setback before you can move on. Like I said, it's not a linear progress. It's not a linear progression. You have to go down at times. You have to retreat, make a tactical retreat or take a beating before you go up to make that bigger play. So when you look at the mindset, it's how do I, even if the journey is ugly, like Keisha said, even if there are extenuating or external factors that make it difficult for me to level up, how am I going to orientate my thinking, my perspectives, my insights to make sure that when I'm trying to step up, I do it in a fashion where it's conducive to getting to my success, but also where I'm not feeling pressured, overwhelmed or overtly negative about not reaching that level at the time I want to reach it or in the manner I want to reach it, in the way I want to reach it. How do I get to that big step in a way that makes me satisfied, that gives me fulfillment, and that continues the same mindset that I've been using so far to get to the point where I'm at and to get me to where I want to be? Well, I appreciate all of y'all. Thank you. Ooh, Thank y'all for playing yes. this. Yeah. yeah, you feel it, right? I you feel, feel it. That. This is it, Outliers. Like, um, I, I want to give, there's a couple of things. One, Outliers, if you're, if you're listening to this and you're at any point, something in this message, like this, this conversation really resonate with you, please take the time right now to share this with one person. That's it. That's our only ask here. We don't need to go blast it over social media or anything like that. Like, just go share it with one person. If you want to do it on social media, feel free. But I I have found, like, actually, like, reaches people is if you look them in the eye or you send them a message and say, I was listening to this and I thought of you. Take a listen. That like it just it just going back to busy versus productive, going back to efficient versus effective. It's efficient to send a message, uh, to to blast something. And it's effective to actually let someone know that you were thinking of them, especially in today's society where we just like everyone's just being marketed to. So if something touches you and you'd like to to impact someone else, please go and, and let them know uh, genuinely. Um, I also want to make sure that any outlier who's listening to this that wants to go deeper down your world knows how to do so. So um, let's go. We'll start off with you, uh, Coach K. Then we'll go over to you, Monsa. The way that I that I wrap up this part here is that we share an insight that we had from the conversation. Uh, we're all in the space of continuous learning, and so I want to see like what did you get from this conversation here? What is something you're thinking about differently? What's a perspective you got that's different? And if there isn't any, you can just state that as well. Like that's fine. Um, and then afterwards, go ahead and just let us know how we can. Uh, Stay, go further into your world. All right. So Keisha, we'll start with you Absolutely. and then we'll go with Monzo. 
So I definitely got great value because for one, I love having growth minded conversations. And this was exactly that. And it's just important to continue to surround yourself around those growth minded conversations, whatever that looks like. Um, make sure that you are leaving feeling inspired, um, feeling motivated um, and wanting to potentially learn more on a specific subject that might have been discussed in it. Um, but just always being open minded and receptive um, and understanding that sometimes things can change. Your perspectives will always change having a growth mindset. So I definitely got that. Um, super appreciative of the conversation, the engagement. Um, I love what Menza ended up with because I agree with that 100%. You have to be ready to accept those obstacles as a part of the journey. So super appreciative for him, you know, ending on that tidbit. Um, and you pretty much can find me um, on all social media um, at Coach K Transforms. You can visit my website to learn more about me, what I offer, the programs and services available at UpgradedMindsetsWithTheZ.life. Um, and you can also um, just follow me on my podcast as well. I would love for you to subscribe to the Upgraded Mindsets media channel on YouTube. Or if you are listening audio wise, then you can subscribe to Empowering Real Talk. Um, on audio and you can subscribe to the woman's hustle thrills and spills of entrepreneurship they are two separate podcasts streaming on all audio platforms as well so definitely would love you guys to you know follow engage and let me know what you think well, I, I appreciate it let's, let's go ahead and do that outliers and once uh, uh, an insight for today and how people can continue down with you Genuinely, I just want to start by saying I feel privileged that I get the opportunity to look, I mean, look who I'm on a call with People who are, especially in YouTube, so established in the business world, you've got so many things going on. I'm 19 and I get to tap into your wisdom and your knowledge. It's yeah. just a complete and utter privilege to be able to have these conversations and to be able to learn from guys, guys and girls like you, I should say. Honestly, I think that as outliers, you just need to continue integrating more tidbits of knowledge, more insights, and be able to take what you know already and develop it further. Genuinely, it's been a pleasure with you guys, Coach K, Niyama. Thank you for having me on. You can find me at mmundea on Instagram. My YouTube channel is just once a Mundea. And follow Global Self Perspective on YouTube and on LinkedIn under Maureen and Kandu. My podcast, Divide and Conquer, on Spotify and all other podcast streaming platforms. And I want to thank you guys for watching. Please do continue to follow the outliers edge Niyama, i'll pass over to you thank you so much thank you all for just being so gracious with your time with your experience with the way that with the conversation thanks for letting us dip dive duck go into things and also like look at it from a from a higher higher perspective i appreciate you this is why y'all are, are, are amazing I, I appreciate you sharing some of that amazingness with us here today here goes the thing here until the next time we talk be with the, be you on purpose journey on <laughs>